How to learn Japanese. This is directed to foreigners likely living outside of Japan and without any prior knowledge in learning Japanese. When I was learning Japanese, I had no plan, no map, no guideline. Uh, there really wasn't anything out there to help direct my learning, like where I should go, what I should learn, how I should learn it. And as a result, my studies my learning Japanese started out really slow. Over time though, I slowly figured out the pathway, the right pathway to learning Japanese, and I wanna share that with you guys today. The best way to master Japanese is with a framework, a learning guideline. Basically a plan that tells you which steps to take and I'm gonna provide that for you guys here uh, So without further ado, let's jump right in Okay, this is a very general overall timeline um, One master pronunciation, which is super easy Two, master hiragana and katakana or just kana Four, learn the basic grammar and kanji and five, learn everything else I'm gonna talk about each of these steps in depth um, for the remainder of this video and basically give you guys some resources uh, that you can use to master each of these steps. One, master pronunciation. The best advice I have for this is basically to listen to a native speaker, speak Japanese, and mimic them. The better that you can mimic them, the more natural you will sound. Learning Japanese pitch accents uh, is also quite important if you want to sound as close to a native as possible. There are several videos on YouTube that can help you with this. Uh, in addition, some of the textbooks that I will recommend in this video, like Nakama, also indicate pitch for every vocabulary word and expression when presented, which is super helpful. Alternatively, you can try more specialized programs like Dogen's Patreon lessons that help you master Japanese pitch accents. Mastering pitch and perfect pronunciation, however, can be practiced throughout your entire journey of learning Japanese. Um, it's best, however, to get really good at it really early because when you do that, you don't develop a bad habit of speaking Japanese with the incorrect pitch or speaking Japanese with incorrect pronunciation that you would have to correct later otherwise. So the earlier, the better. That's why it's step one. Step two, master hiragana and katakana. If you're learning Japanese, there is no way around learning these two alphabets or syllabaries. They are necessary to your studies and you will have to learn them eventually, so learn them early on, uh, even as you're learning pitch and uh, Japanese correct pronunciation. Be learning hiragana and katakana as well. Most textbooks will teach you the basic syllabar syllabaries in the, like, the first chapter, so there's no getting around it. Romaji is a no-no. And there are many ways to master and learn hiragana and katakana. I prefer a mixture of methods just to make learning fun and to keep you on your toes and to really help it stick. I took a few approaches to learning both syllabaries. Um, first, I used a textbook, Japanese from Zero, One and Two. Um, it gradually introduced a set of characters in each chapter and progressively replaced Domaji with the characters that you learned. It really eased me into hiragana and katakana and I loved it. It made it super painless, which is awesome. I also used these two apps simply called hiragana and katakana. Um, it was many, many years ago, so I don't know if they're still on the app store. These are what their icons look like. And alternatively, there are other Kana learning apps as well. There are also many Kana learning websites. My personal favorite is the monster game found on the website that accompanies the Japanese from Zero books. Link in the description. Uh, also, the, uh, the website that accompanies Marugoto's Japanese textbook has an interesting Kana drill game. Um, it might be worth checking out. Again, link in the description. And if those sites and apps don't work for you, uh, you can always Google another application or site. There's plenty of them out there. Or if you just hate computers and want to fight the man by refusing to use technology of any kind, uh, there's always the old-fashioned paper and pencil way. Just rote memorization. Yeah. I find that flashcards also work really well. Uh, I used those two when I was first learning Hiragana and Katakana. Oh, and I forgot to mention uh, From Zero's Kana workbook. 
They really make some great material, the From Zero Company, and I highly recommend all of their textbooks, especially for beginners to Japanese and especially for self learners of Japanese. If you guys have any other methods for learning hiragana or katakana, please let me know in the comment section below. Step 3 Learn the basic grammar and kanji. I put quotes around basic because, you know, who's to judge really what is basic grammar and kanji? Ultimately, the basic grammar that is taught in beginner and intermediate Japanese lessons um, or classes is determined by the major Japanese language learning textbooks out there. Usually, though, the grammar and kanji taught in these texts is enough for you to get around Japan once you master all of them, so I think they're basic enough. Anyways, the primary method for learning basic grammar and kanji is through the aforementioned Japanese textbooks. These include the Nakama series, the Genki series, the Yokoso series, the Japanese from Zero series, and the Marugoto textbooks, as well as many, many others out there. If you go through any one of these series, they're all fine. If you go through intently, you can function just fine in Japan emphasis on the intently part. I knew someone who studied and memorized the crap out of everything in the Genki textbook series and he essentially knew everything he needed to get around just fine in Japan. Uh, with that strong foundation, he was able to learn more about advanced structures and phrases and vocabulary just through conversation and being immersed in the culture. That's why I wrote basic grammar and kanji in this list. Um, with that down, you can go to higher levels and become more fluent simply by using what you've learned in those textbooks as a basis for higher learning. Links in the description below for each of these textbooks and where to find them online. If you're strapped for cash and want another way to learn the basics, you can always go to the oh-so-wonderful internet for free Japanese resources and lessons. Granted, they may not be as great quality as the professionally written textbooks, but beggars can't be choosers, guys. One fantastic exception, uh, however, is Taekim's or is it Taikim? Taikim? I never really know how to pronounce his name. Taikim's Guide to Learning Japanese. This resource truly covers all of the basics and more. Not only that, it teaches grammar in a way that is more down to earth and understandable. Uh, it also includes informal Japanese right from the beginning, uh, which is just unheard of in formal textbooks, and I highly recommend that as a way of teaching Japanese. Again, it's a free resource, one that you can find online. Uh, if you want a print copy, Mr. Kim also sells one on Amazon, I'll include that in the links below, just see the description. And once you've got all the basics down, you can essentially go to Japan and be totally okay. And while you're in Japan, you can move on to step 5, learn everything else. By everything else, I mean all the stuff not traditionally taught in the textbooks or online resources. Um, things like slang and colloquial expressions, internet slang and words, uh, specialized vocabulary and phrases, cultural phenomena, personal experiences, etc, etc, etc. All of these things are really just learnable through being immersed and surrounded by Japanese and the Japanese culture. Of course, if you can't go to Japan just yet, you can still surround yourself with Japanese in other ways. You can get a Japanese language partner. If you can't find one living near you or one willing to meet up with you, there's always the internet. Are you seeing a pattern here? One website I use to find a Japanese language exchange partner, conversation exchange partner, is themixer.com with two X's. Uh, it, may sound, it may seem a little strange, the name, the title, but it's actually a really legit website. I met a great Japanese conversation partner who also wanted to learn English. Uh, we would chat on Skype regularly and our families became super close and I even visited her in Tokyo when I went last uh, spring break. There are also plenty of other services online to help you connect with language partners, so I suggest you do some googling. I always recommend the mixer. You can also just continue your studies through textbooks. At this point, you might as well start using Japanese textbooks in Japanese. <laughs> A great way to search for these is by going to Amazon, uh, probably the Japanese Amazon is better. Um, just type in Nihongo and uh, Ryugakuse and then search that. There will be a few options. Uh, they actually did this at the Japanese university that I'm studying at. They provided us with textbooks specifically tailored to Ryugakuse or study abroad students living in Japan. 
And honestly, I think this is perfect for students who have just finished mastering the basics of Japanese. And if you don't think you're confident enough to start using Japanese textbooks in Japanese, you can always still just go to more advanced textbooks in English. One that I highly recommend is、uh, Tobira's. Tobira's Japanese textbook series.、Uh, after learning the basics, I recommend you start with a book called An Integrated Approach to Intermediate Japanese. And then when you finish that, you can move on to Tobira's Gateway to Advanced Japanese. After you master that, I highly recommend you try Japanese textbooks in Japanese. That, or you could just go to Japan and immerse yourself in the language and culture. I didn't really talk about kanji in step five.、Um, Kanji, there's really not a set guideline for which kanji to learn after you finish the basic kanji or the kanji you learn with the basic textbooks. I found that a great、uh, way to learn kanji after you master the basics is to just go through the JLPT kanji of the level you're at. When you finish the basics,、uh, like the textbooks and everything, all those series, you are probably at an N3 level. So, I would study all the N3 kanji, take JLPT N3 if you pass that, go on to N2 level kanji, take the JLPT, pass that, then move on to N1 level kanji, take the JLPT, pass that, and then do some research on your own and just learn more kanji that maybe isn't taught at the JLPT level. The way Japanese learn kanji is just through reading, <laughs> reading manga and.、Um, Other literature. If you do a lot of reading, if you immerse yourself using manga and anime in Japanese with no English, no English subtitles, no English translations, then、uh, you'll learn a lot. You'll be fine. One great resource, I highly recommend this resource for learning kanji, is、um, a website called Wani Kani. It was created by Tofugu. Tofugu Company with Koichi. He created this awesome space repetition system for learning kanji through the radicals, the characters, and then you learn vocabulary. Highly, highly, highly recommend that for learning kanji, especially after you've completed all the basics. I'm using it right now. I'm going to be making a video about it soon, so stay tuned for that. Otherwise, that's basically everything. Your whole framework for Japanese is laid out right here. Now it's up to you to go out and just do it! Peace, guys.